All right, so I hope uh, everyone's getting settled in and, and raring to go. Um, in this session, we are going to talk a little bit about how math optimization uh, works well with machine learning. Uh, this is something we did hit on in Opti 101, but things are always changing. New things are always happening. Progress is always being made. Cool things are happening. So um, it's always a good idea to give an update here and expand upon uh, what we've what we've may have previously previously discussed. So uh, one thing I want to hit on is just sort of why uh, optimization is important um, and how it is a such a great uh, sort of um, uh, companion to to machine learning, deep learning, and other data science tools. So uh, we're going to look at a few examples of the business problems that optimization has solved. Um, so to do that, let's look at first who uses it, math optimization. And essentially, uh, anyone who does anything um, at a larger scale, um, particularly, um, uses math optimization. This is these are uh, just some of the um, logos that that um, and companies that have uh, that are working with uh, Groby and using our product, um, and and uh, th they span all sorts of industries, solving all sorts of different types of problems. Um, it, it is a mathematical optimization is truly such a malleable um, um, tool to be able to help in decision making. So um, specifically, what problems kind of does it solve? Well, uh, I'll give one example of the types of problems that it solves and the scale that it can solve problems. So uh, the National Football League uses uh, the Groby Optimizer to, uh, as, as part of its process to determine um, schedule uh, each and every year. So um, if you think about the scheduling problem for, uh, for, the, for the NFL, scheduling 32 teams across 18 weeks with bye weeks and considering um, uh, travel, and um, things like that, and then while also considering things like recent moves in in uh, in player free agency and and which uh, um, which matchups are going to get the most eyes um, on screens, um, it's a very complex problem, and they use um, Groby as part of their solution to to determine what schedule they're going to have each and every year. So. Um, that just sort of shows the scale because this problem is absolutely massive, um, absolutely uh, ju just a monster problem to solve, but Groby's there to help. So a couple examples that I want to quickly talk about that specifically um, uh, highlight uh, machine learning and optimization working together. Um, one uh, case study that we have on our website that you can look at um, is Decision Lab optimizing um, scarce water resources, combining machine learning um, and optimization, as well as um, uh, subscription box service optimization with Birchbox. So these are a couple really cool uh, case studies that I would suggest that you take a look at if you're interested in more, but also look at all of our case studies because uh, they, um, they're all really interesting problems. So that provided some examples of who uses optimization, some of the problems that they solve, and specifically how um, th th that there are uh, some cases out there. And actually a lot of cases, I only highlighted a couple that we, that we have, uh, but there are a lot of cases of using machine learning and optimization together. So now what I wanna talk about is uh, how optimization sort of fits in sort of the broader AI uh, um, uh, set of, of approaches that you can take um, in, in solving a problem. So what we see on this uh, on the screen right now is a visual from Gartner that talks about um, possible AI techniques and, and sort of uh, how do you know which one to choose. So what we have right now, what we see is we have a business problem and some kind of data, you know, depending on what, you know, what, what we have um, in the data set and, and its, its size. Um, that tells us sort of, hey, maybe we can use deep learning or classical machine learning, so on and so forth. Um, but everything that um, is predictive analytics lives up here. And sometimes you can see that maybe your goal isn't achieved because there's half of the screen empty here. And what lives in that bottom half is a lot of stuff. Um, in, in Opti 101, I talked about a, a lot of um, possibilities for for you to uh, to make decisions in terms of uh, how 
the approach that you would take in decision making. Um, but uh, mathematical optimization definitely lives in this bottom half where we maybe call it some of this um, uh, prescriptive analytics would live in here um, and uh, definitely some other um, techniques as well. But um, we see that finding optimal solution with constraints um, is, uh, is in this flow. So um, if you do have sort of decision problems that, that um, uh, business problems that you need some help deciding stuff, um, then uh, this flow of working with um, uh, machine learning and having that work um, in concert with mathematical optimization uh, can work for you. So um, now that we've sort of established who uses it, how do you know how, how does this fit into like a bigger problem flow? Um, when do we know uh, if if mathematical optimization is the right tool? So let's first give a very quick recap of what mathematical optimization is. Again, this was all in the 101 stuff, but it's an approach to solving a complex decision problems where you have a few things. You want to find the best course of action among many possibilities um, that the decision maker can set. So you actually have control over what's happening um, given some specified limitations with some particular objective in mind. So you take this decision problem and uh, you want to then convert it to some not so uh, intimidating math. This is some stuff that we've seen before in Opti 101, but we see that we have decision variables. We know what those are. We know the flavors that they come in, you know, the uh, continuous, integer, binary. Uh, we may even see a new one um, in, in uh, training over the next couple of days. Um, we also have our constraints, which provide limitations on what we can do and cannot do, and our objective function as well. So we're minimizing or maximizing, um, maybe minimizing costs or maximizing um, throughput, so on and so forth. And then you pair all that up with um, a solver like Garobi, and that's uh, if you if if all of this stuff sounds like what, what what can work for your decision problem, then mathematical optimization is probably the right tool for you. So then how do we combine machine learning and optimization? There are actually, you might think that, okay, well, you know, there's gotta be just like one way to do that. Well, in, in reality, um, there are a, a few that they sort of fall into three different buckets. One is uh, using optimization to train a machine learning model. And if you think about what machine learning is, again, um, it's all about minimizing some sort of loss function which is an optimization problem. So least squares regression, when you're, you're minimizing the error, um, uh, the optimization algorithm sits inside the machine learning algorithm. So this is, this is very common. And again, essentially pretty much, or I would say pretty much, all um, uh, machine learning problems are minimizing something like this or maybe maximizing something else, but, but it is some sort of optimization that is under the hood there. And there are some specific cases that, that we have, um, some examples where specifically um, using mathematical optimization, the way that we have been talking about it with decision variables, constraints, and objectives and everything is the right tool, is a really useful tool for training a machine learning model. Uh, the most common way that you think about the relationship between machine learning and optimization is you build a machine learning model to essentially provide some sort of numerical prediction. So something like a demand forecast or inventory levels. And then from that, you use that number as an input to an optimization model. So um, that, that's kind of what we've been describing with, um, with the uh, problems and examples that we had in Opti 101. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit at the toward the end of, of the training, um, a little bit of a, a more of a third option that we have where you sort of flip the roles from part one, where the machine learning model is something that is embedded into a larger optimization model. So you may have a machine learning model that um, relates the sales and price um, of a particular item. So as as price goes up. Um, you can think that the number of sales, the demand will go down and vice versa. So how can you take that relationship and then embed a trained machine learning model into a broader optimization model that maybe will optimize your overall supply chain? So number two is what we've been mostly talking about um, in Opti 101 and still in, in Opti 201, 
but we will get to uh, to number three here uh, toward the very end of the training. So uh, definitely, um, if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then then uh, tune in then. So you may be thinking, all right, I, I understand again, you know, thanks for uh, uh, refreshing my memory on what mathematical optimization is, who uses it, the types of problems that they solve and everything like that. There was a lot of uh, one-on-one stuff, but again, new ways of talking about it, new ways of communicating it. Um, and and uh, as we sort of saw with, the, with that last um, slide, um, they're just sort of new ways of uh, talking about the relationship between uh, machine learning and optimization. So uh, one common uh, issue and problem that that I come that I came across with um, professionally um, earlier in my career, and and I know a lot of other people um, in sort of the operations research community who who may be uh, a little bit more experts in mathematical optimization, or people in the data science and broader AI community who are just learning about mathematical optimization, I get one common question. How do I explain what mathematical optimization is and the problems it can solve? Like, how can I communicate that sort of in a uh, in a short, um, short and sweet kind of way? And it's not an easy problem. It's not an easy way to to uh, to problem to solve. It's not an easy thing to do. I've spent a, a whole two half day training, and then we're back at it again um, to try and to try and uh, uh, help answer this question. So what we at Groby have, have uh, put some effort into is making a set of explainer videos to help um, clearly communicate what optimization does and the problems that it can solve. And they are aimed at um, a few different groups. So do, do, depending on who your target audience is, when you're trying to explain what mathematical optimization is, you, you should have the right video um, to be able to forward or to show um, to help communicate what's going on with mathematical optimization. So the first one that I suggest um, is, uh, and all of these are on our uh, YouTube uh, uh, channel and the links will be provided as well. So you'll be able to get to these right away. One, the first one is just sort of how it works, you know, how Groby uh, fits into the decision intelligence and just what Groby does um, and what mathematical optimization does at a very high level, a great way to sort of show show this to everybody, show this to anyone to, to sort of um, help them understand at a high level what optimization is doing. But if you have sort of specific audiences in mind, so someone that is like a data scientist, uh, you can uh, show a video for them that tells, uh, sort of shows how you can go from predictions to decisions. If you are uh, an operations research sort of expert and that's that, that's your field, um, we have, a, again, another video for that um, to help operations research people prepare for optimal impact, sort of describing the differences between some approaches that you may be using and why mathematical optimization uh, is uh, could be the right tool for you. And then also for business leaders, um, about uh, in this video, we talk about how mathematical optimization really uh, really uh, hits the nail on the head for extremely complex problems. So um, no matter what your audience is, we have something that can help sort of explain uh, explain mathematical optimization and and sort of lower that barrier to entry for you. So that's it for me for now. Um, the next session is um, how you can how different approaches um, can help you make better decisions um, with Asan from Decision Spot, our, our partner for for this training once again. So uh, I hope you tune into that session as well. It's awesome. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, so I finished about a minute or so early. Grab a, grab another cup of coffee if you need it, and we'll see you in the next session.